What is going on, lunatics? So let's go over a bunch of things that are going on right now. We'll give you as much as we can. I'm getting pretty excited. I think that we're about to have a big time rally. This big time rally, in my mind, is going to be about three to four X from where we are right now. Now, is that significant overall? Of course not. That's just getting back into some ranges that we've been in before. This is nothing new. Uh, I don't know about the breakout to an all-time high, or at least a local all-time high post-crash, but it feels like we're kind of getting there, and there's some discussion about, it even looks like we're bringing one of the old, um, in, in my opinion, bad actors back into the good fold. So we'll see how this plays out, but let's talk about it. If you like this type of content, make sure that you hit that like button on the way in. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. Remember, if you really want to support this channel, it is all about Terra Finance and about Terra Casino. Terra Casino, if you want to, wait for it, do some risk-based gaming. Uh, you can use Terra Classic, you can use Luna, Bitcoin, Ethereum, BNB, BUSD, Polygon, Matic, USDC, USDT, Dogecoin, and look, you can come out a big-time winner if you just go to Terra Casino and check it out. Sign up in the link down below. So, let's move on. Terra Classic rejects key proposal. This is the proposal for the website, uh, and this was being given two days ago, three days ago, whatever it was, uh, as the reason for the big catalyst. It wasn't. So uh, it gets rejected, but what does is Terraform Labs bankruptcy, which we're getting some clarity on. And now, the important thing here is, remember, we I told you a long time ago that there was about 274 billion tokens, and then Happy Caddy goes in and he finds a small amount, right? And then the next thing you know, Happy Caddy changes his tune to 275 billion because there's a lot that between the Luna Foundation Guard and Terra uh, and Terraform Labs, they have a significant portion, and that's going to be a, a huge burn. Well, there's more to it because Terraform Labs is also reopening um, the shuttle bridge, and that is going to uh, burn a 150 million Luna tokens. Now you might be ask, asking yourself, why is that significant? Well, that's significant because there's only 800 million in the circulating supply. Therefore, by moving 150 million out of that supply, you're going to dilute this uh, dilute this share across fewer tokens, meaning that this is going to get a significant price pump. Maybe even afterwards test a dollar or two dollars again now this is luna this is not luna classic how does that apply well a lot of us are going to sell our luna and move it over into luna classic luna classic trading at four zeros nine oh six five so that is a, a a great opportunity for a spike in price now let's get back to this so we've got the price potentially boosting and by the way we're up about 30 percent from a, a very short period of time but that recovery is off of a, a massive dump. So when people tell you, well, you're up 30%, it's, I mean, come on. Anyway, so let's go through a little bit more here. Uh, they're talking about, the, of course, the Oracle pool. 3.1.3 uh, is the one that we're talking about right here. Frog Vertig, uh, the, the latest update is prop number 12118. 12118 is going to be the upgrade, which is going to allow for the replenishment of that Oracle pool. Now, as far as voting goes, this proposal has already passed, basically. This is uh, everybody so far, including all nodes, everybody has voted yes to this. There is no no vote. So this upgrade is going to happen. So now, uh, one of the things that I should point out here, Jesus is Lord 1 and 2 voted yes for it. You would think that they would vote no. However, let's continue moving on. Because now we have set on-chain tax rate to 1.5 from Jesus is Lord. Now, is this a good idea? No, because it is a an affront to what Binance wants, what most of these... Um, what, what most of these centralized exchanges want, and they keep saying, don't mess with it. Well, it doesn't matter whether we mess with it or not at this point. If we're going to revive this chain, we're going to have to do something radical. Now, speaking of that, we have to make a decision on whether we want the support of Binance or not. Now, uh, he goes into depth uh, to discuss this. Uh, when the 80-20% split happens, et cetera, et cetera, existing, a proposal for the 1.5% tax would be three times the burn rate 
uh, three times the rate of community pool funding from the tax and three times the rate of Oracle pool funding. Now, the motivation is because we simply haven't burned enough. Now, in the event that we were to burn, let's say, three times as much as we've burned so far, uh, that's a hundred. That's yeah, about what we would have when the $274 billion, uh, $275 billion is burning from the, the Luna Foundation Garden Terraform Lab. So, that's a significant amount of burn. Now, here's the other part to it, right? The math that he's using is nonsense. And we should at least recognize that he's using nonsense here because when we come to the market and we really start to evaluate what the marketplace looks like, there's 17 million in trade volume. The majority of that, 50% of the trade volume comes from Binance. If Binance ignores the tax, if they ignore it completely, and by the way, all of these ignore the tax. So when you do this and you change it to volume and you start to look at where is the volume coming from, okay? Uh, when you see that, you see station doesn't even represent, okay? That's where the, the tax would basically come from. So uh, if, if that's the case, then none of this is gonna be burned. So this is an irrelevant proposal but let's call it necessary, okay, to, to get people back onto the chain burning uh, taxes. So, uh, again, I, I like the fact that we're getting this. I, I like the fact that this discussion is happening. I don't like the fact that Binance is probably not going to do this. Anyway, so here's the thing. This is a background of the tax, and, and he addresses this. So it says, originally the 1.2% burn tax was implemented in September 22. Uh, there were several months of original 1.2 burn tax with a target to reduce the total supply to $10 billion. This rate uh, ran for one month in duration and was replaced by a 0.2% burn tax with a 10% reminting component to the community pool. This was later changed to a 50% reminting component. This led to the reminting of Binance manual burns into the community pool, the Binance trade fee burns were halted unless the reminting was stopped. The 50% reminting was lowered back to 10% in the Prop 11111. The 10% was subsen subsequently lowered to zero. Reminting proposal in 11242. Binance started burning again monthly, but has since burned only 50% of their lunk trading fees instead of 100%. Without a funding source from the tax and with the gas fees insufficient to supply the community's funding needed for the development, proposal 311360 was implemented to split the burn tax 90% burn, 10% to community. The 0.2% uh, tax lasted for around seven months and was adjusted to 0.5. At the same time as the 0.5 was implemented, the tax split was changed to 80% burn and the rest going through the distribution model means 10% of the community pull and 10% to staking reward. So this is giving kind of a background on why this is happening, bringing us up to date. A result, USTC uh, reminting occurring dur due to swaps of classic coins. Proposal 11784 was implemented to disable those swaps and put a stop to any reminting. Now, 11873 passed seven months ago to rework the implementation of the on-chain on tax to gas. And not there yet, but we're going to get to that. Proposal 12098 passed to change the 10% staking reward component, uh, and then the tax to gas job was eventually taken up by Genuine Labs and is set to be completed and implemented shortly with Genuine Labs four weeks into the estimated five-week job with progress detailed here. This proposal does not go vote until after tax to gas is successfully implemented. So this is the idea here, okay? Uh, so, so what the idea here is current trajectory, 123 billion learn, uh, burned, 99 years to reach 10 billion target. Uh, so uh, what he wants to do is turn it into 33 years. But here's the problem, okay? The, the, the problem with this is that it, 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 this is going to reduce volume. I mean, we're not going to take a 1.5% tax and lose their uh, lose their yield, if you will, uh, to, to pay for some of this stuff. What's going to happen is people are going to find something else to trade. And I, I, I don't know that people see this or don't see this. Uh, so I'm going to support it because, you know, it's, we got to do something radical. So I'm going to be supportive of this process here. But I want you guys to understand the reason that I'm doing this is because something, something does, I think, have to change. And if this changes and we start to burn a more significant amount, then that would be um, better. So the above data, and this is this is to get an idea here, the above data shows on-chain weekly volume, and it is important to note that outlying data points may skew data. Using this data, we determine an average weekly volume separated by tax period, okay? So, and you can see as we go down here, they're adding, the, the problem with the 124 billion is that most of the burn comes from uh, Binance doing it manually, with half of their fees. So, you know, when we look at this, we're accounting for it as if it's part of a burn process, but it's not. So these numbers are messed up completely. None of this is real, okay? None of this is, um, is and you can see 
by the way, uh, most of the burns happened a long time ago. And that was five weeks, 29 weeks, 55 weeks. So the sample on the 20, on the total time is 26 billion. No, it's not even close because look, this is what's burning over the last seven days, 350 million. So this is a pie in the sky sort of proposal, possibly necessary. So uh, tax revenue, uh, then we talk about the community pool. Again, this is not up for debate or, or vote at this point. This is just the conversation. We're gonna dig deeper into this over the next couple of days. We'll look at this over and over again to decide whether or not this is the thing for us. But uh, he's gone pretty deep and in detail. Um, and there's advantages here, uh, which we, again, we're going to talk about all this. And then there's some concerns. And he does address some of the concerns. And then that would be how you would uh, vote uh, yes or no or abstain, of course. Uh, so, um, and then a lot of people are, are just kind of running through all of these different pieces and, and giving their opinion on it. And this is important to have this conversation. Again, I, you know, I don't know how this, how do you, how you implement something that your, your primary trader is going to ignore, right? Um, meme coins, which, you know, we apply kind of as a meme coin at this point, the meme coins, uh, the burns for meme coins, they don't apply to, to the, the, the exchanges. So nothing that they're doing over there, they're going to ignore. So these burns, they're going to happen. Uh, but we would have it in case you wanted to trade on Terraport.finance. If you are looking to trade meme coins or Luna Classic, this is your place to go. Terraport.finance is where you trade uh, Luna Classic. So uh, go over there and check it out today. They are the primary sponsor of this channel. What is going on, guys? You know when I give it to you, it's important. Cryptonomy.finance just launched their own channel. This is a key financial sector for information every single day about what's going on in cryptocurrency and the broader markets. It's on Telegram and it's cryptonomy underscore community. Go check it out today. You know staking is where it's at. There's panic in the market right now. Fear and greed index is down in the 20s right now. And you should know by this point, it is a time to buy. So my first deposit right now, you guys know I'm bullish on it, API3. I really think API3 does a 100 to 300x in this next bull run. I just staked 4,000 API3. My reward on that, 2,892 API3. I think it's trading around $1.90 right now. So this is a big move for me. I think that this could produce some serious yield. Not to be outdone, you guys love Jasmine. I love Jasmine as well. I think it's going to be the biggest thing uh, in, in blockchain for gaming at some point, maybe even integrated into Sony. 340,000 Jasmine right now. I just staked it for nine months. And my reward on this, 244,516 Jasmine. I'm super excited about this one. I think it's going to be a big banger. But let's face it, the real money is made over here on the launch pool, water coin, water. We talked about it already. It's already up 6X. They took a big profit on this already. Cookie, you remember Cookie trending on Dex Tools, up 5X right now. Potoshi up 3X. Huge yields being rewarded. Cryptopia TOS was also 3X in the last round. Cryptonomy.finance knows what they're doing when it comes to these big launches. Make sure that you're contacting Cryptonomy.finance and if you do, you can use their 24-7 support line as well. Uh, you can convert your collateral into whatever it is that you need because they hold almost every crypto asset that you can possibly think of for staking and rewards. So sign up to Cryptonomy.finance today. Oh, and one more thing. In about a month, Cryptonomy is going to announce its own launch pad. It'll start launching its own. And guess what? You, as a customer and a VIP, VIP user, you're going to get first crack at all of the best projects. It's not financial advice. I'm always right. So anyway, we'll talk more about this a little while. Let's talk about price action because there is a big spike coming. Now, if you follow me for any length of time, you know I'm telling you what's going to happen here. You know we've been pretty good about it. Now, I want you to zoom out because we're doing this on a one day. And uh, let's minimize this right here. And let's look at this a little bit deeper, okay? So right now, there's the big spike. There's the, the, the secondary and the third uh, spike. There's a fourth spike coming. So something big is going to happen. It is destiny. Joe Biden has dropped out of the American election. Donald Trump is now the prohibitive favorite by a lot. And it looks like we're going to get a rally. Now, if we get a rally, then that means that we're going to have a moment where this price starts to really, really surge. Now, currently, we're looking at a surge right now of about 3x from where we are 
or 3x from where we were just a short period of time ago, almost almost 4x from that point, right? So we're going to have a significant run. There is a big move, uh, it looks like, in the chamber. Now, when we look at this more broadly, we can see that there's. it's been a long time since we've had that move. Now, uh, the last time we had that big spike was right there. Uh, and if we just kind of uh, move that over here and look at it, we are pretty much overdue for that next big spike. Now, if you notice, by the way, uh, you can see that there was a ground swell of momentum kind of taking us to that point for that breakout. And then what ended up happening was we absolutely broke down because the market started dumping billions of dollars. Uh, I think it was $200 billion over the course of like two days, which took us way down here, put us into this situation. Now, we're in that situation. What have I been telling you guys? Let's zoom in because it's important now um, to, to recognize. Remember I told you guys it was important to get into that channel again. Well, guess what happened? We got into that channel. Not only did we get into that channel, we created a descending flag into that channel for a couple days, and then we broke out above it. Now, it didn't maintain, it didn't continue. We got rejected almost at that three zeros number. So, you know, we didn't have the enormous spike that we were looking for to get into that range, but we we're kind of close. Uh, didn't drop to zero, still kind of sitting right here. Now, there's another explosive move coming. Now, let me zoom back out so you guys can see uh, in the longer term, uh, what I told you guys was this move right here to here to here is establishing that this is real, okay? So what are we going to look at to happen? Well, most likely scenario is one more back test right here, and then we're going to have a breakout, and then we're going to do a little testing right here, and then I think we're going to get just a crazy surge, a crazy surge taking us into the three zeros, 22 sort of range. That's what's going to happen. Now, because we're getting into the phase of the market where breakouts are going to be imminent, then what I think is going to happen is we're going to get a surge above and we're going to get a test back down here for a little while. And then something else is going to happen and we're going to get a breakout up into this three zeros, 32. It's inevitable at this point that that's what's getting ready to happen. And we're not seeing it. And we're not seeing it because we don't understand the fact that we're going to burn a significant amount of supply. Like everybody's not seeing it yet, but they will see it and they're going to react to it. And the reaction is going to be incredible, in my opinion. So uh, be watching for this to happen over the next uh, days, weeks. You know, uh, it's going to take a little while. I think Bitcoin is about to hit an all-time high this week. I would, uh, you, you know, if I were... Uh, if I were gamble, if I were a gambler, I would gamble that that's probably more more likely the case. Uh, you got Donald Trump speaking at the Bitcoin 2024. You got Elon Musk who just showed up to Bitcoin 2024. Uh, he he changed his profile to laser eyes. So now you've got Elon Musk leaning into Bitcoin. You've got Donald Trump leaning into Bitcoin. You've got everything that you want for the bull rally to start. The only thing left. Nine days from now, we're going to find out about the Fed rate. And if they cut rates 25 basis points, which I don't think that they will, but if they do cut it 25 basis points, this will kick off the golden bull cycle of this a little bit earlier than we anticipate. And we could be looking at hundred to $150,000 Bitcoin before you know it. There's a lot going on in the background. So just stick with us on this because it will cascade down to the rest of this market. So be watching out for just an epic move coming pretty soon. Now let's move on. All right, so Roddy down 50% on the day. This is a, this is a bad day uh, overall for some of these meme coins. You can, you can see right here, some of them, even Volt had a nice little run for the day. Bio, nice little run for the day. But generally speaking, a lot of these things have been struggling. Uh, the governance proposal up, again, is... Uh, uh, that message software update, which 3.1.3 is going to pass through here. We've already gotten it's it's meeting the it's meeting the threshold. Um, as far as volume goes, we did look at this before. Uh, same thing over here with USTC volume just significantly down, kind of moving sideways for the moment. An explosive move probably coming very soon. Why? Because Terra is about to do something. Terra Form Labs is about to do a magnificent large burn. It's going to start with Luna. They're going to undelegate and they're going to burn 150 million Luna. Uh, then they've got 125 million for delegation, 25 million meant for liquidity. So they're not going to have to do anything. It's just going to get done. Uh, and then they're going to have to burn the other wallets. Those other wallets include 275 billion Luna Classic. This is where the rally starts, guys. Now, whether we continue or not remains to be seen, but this is where it starts. Again, 350 million burn in the last couple of days. 
volume's not really there. Now, in closing, let's get back over to Terraport.finance because this is important. Uh, we're going to come over here to our earn, and we're still staking over here, but we're going to go to the launch pad, and now you get 200 that you can claim. So we're going to claim that today, uh, and then you can do a swap, $50 worth of tokens to earn a reward. So in the event that you are interested in earning that reward, then, then do a swap, uh, swap your tokens over. Uh, use Terraport.finance. You, you use it, and they burn Luna Classic tokens. Terraport and Terra Casino are two huge burn protocols. So make sure that you're using that today. And if you do, this is from Rocket. Now, Rocket, if you remember, is a tower defense game coming out. And we keep covering it because, again, I'm a fan of tower defense games. And uh, it is active on Terraport.finance. Hey, Terranauts, from now until the end of the countdown, the points for the daily swap quests are doubled. This is your chance to rack up points faster and climb the leaderboard. Don't miss out. Swap and earn double points. So, uh, if you are interested, then you certainly come over here and check it out, okay? Uh, here's the leaderboard, by the way. So if you were looking uh, and you wanted to see uh, where you are on that leaderboard, now I'm number 933, because I'm not. I'm doing dog shit, basically. Um, what, what I probably should have been doing uh, is uh, doing that $50 trade every single day, but um, my job is here to show you. My job is not to take from you. So um, that's it for your update, guys. Uh, go check out Rocket uh, on Terraport.finance. It's free money for you. It's free money for you, so um, get your free money. And uh, let's just enjoy the ride. This bull run is about to kick off exponentially um, at Terra Luna Classic is going to go along with it. But let me know what you think in the comments down below. Uh, remember, this is not financial advice. I'm always right. I appreciate each and every one of you. And we'll talk to you again very, very soon.